So in this review, I'm going to be looking at the Subtank Plus by Kangatech. This is the second version of the Subtank's larger variation. Before the Subtank, if you weren't using a CE5 tank, you'd probably be using either a Nautilus, an Aero Tank, or a Pro Tank. The Pro Tank and the Aero Tank were made by Kangatech, and the Nautilus was made by Aspire. And they were the standard tanks to use. Up until about a year ago, the vaping world was turned literally upside down by the introduction of sub ohm vaping. More specifically, sub ohm vaping in tanks. And back then, it was only a two horse race. You had the Aspire Atlantis or the sub tank by Kanga. But Kanga Tech took the sub tank one step further with the introduction of a rebuildable deck inside of a normal tank. This essentially made the sub tank one of the most versatile tanks on the market. Not only could you use a coil head, but you could also rebuild coils within the tank itself. And Kanga was the only tank to do that for nearly 10 months up until summer 2015. As much of a stir this caused, the sub tank was hardly far from perfection. There was many problems ranging from the coil heads not being accurate with resistance, wicking issues and also the tank itself with bad rubber seals which caused juice to leak out and also the glass tube see now it's a big part of the tank it's very vulnerable to hard knocks so you could potentially smash it coil quality since its initial release the canthal coil is now on its third generation of design and since the version 3 coil has come out i feel the problems have been reduced and also Kanga have released a Ni200 coil which is a temperature control coil which is a really good coil in its own right. And before my reviewers want to take you into an in-depth look we'll go down to the other view. I'll show you how to set up the tank and show you the contents of the box. So to start let's have a look at the box. As you can see the packaging is very attractive. If we slide the sleeve off it will reveal the hard box underneath. And at the bottom of this box, you'll find a genuine product sticker with a QR code. If you scan that with your smartphone, you can check that it's genuine. If you grab the sides of this box, it will pull away, revealing its contents. The first thing you'll see is the tank. You can take the tank and its holder out, and underneath, you'll find more goodies. First thing you'll find is a small instruction book quite brief but quite helpful and just some genuine sticker instructions on how to scan it and whatnot. Below this you'll find the spares and the rebuildable deck. I must say Kanga have been quite generous here. What you do get is a spare glass tube just in case the other one breaks, a spare coil head and to the side of that you'll find the rebuildable deck. I'll just take that out and show you quickly. If you unscrew it, you'll find that it's already got a coil built in. So all you'll need to do is put some cotton through it and then you can start vaping on that. Speaking of cotton, you've already got a bag ready for you here so you haven't got to go out and buy any more extra. So if you keep digging in the box, you'll find another bag. This one's got a screwdriver in it. Uh, some screws for your rebuildable deck, uh, an extra coil and some spare o-rings which I think is quite a good addition there. So that takes care of the box, let's have a look at the tank. So the tank itself is fairly standard design, it has the airflow at the bottom which is adjustable. What I do like about the sub tank is its bottom edge, it's heavily knurled so you can grip it quite tight with your hands when you want to unscrew it, which is a nice touch. The drip tip is annoying as it's not a standard 510 fitting, so you can't just chuck your favourite drip tip on top of this. There are probably some vendors out there that do make them to fit, but I haven't found any yet. The red rings are two of the three O-rings that you will need to replace if you do spring a leak. To set up and fill the tank, it's fairly easy. To unscrew the tank, you just grab the bottom of the tank and turn left to unscrew. When it's undone, it'll just pull away. So the base of the tank is where your coil is screwed on. This is your coil here that I'm screwing off right now. This is what you change if you need to change the coil. And that's just a screw as well. 
You don't want to over tighten that just because it's quite soft metal. To prime your coil, you need to just put a couple of drops of juice into the two side holes of the coil. So that's one. And just let the juice absorb into the coil. You need to put a couple of drops in. And then just put a bit in at the top as well. Not too much, otherwise it will just go straight through down to the airflow. Like so. So when that's done, you just put that to one side and then you can fill the actual tank up itself. What you need to remember is where this post is inside the tank, you don't fill above that, above that. Because if you do fill above that, the juice will just go down into this post here and that just goes straight to the airflow and into your mouth, which isn't very pleasant. So, just fill it up. Like so. That should do. And then it's just a case of screwing the tank back on. And you're good to go. Right, so let's go back up. I'll go through a few more points and after that I'll go through my overall verdict. Let's touch on the size and the look. Size wise it does measure in at 24mm so it will overhang on some mods. But in all fairness you can fit 7 millilitres of juice in this tank. So filling up every 5 minutes will not be a common thing to do at all. For me I'd rather have the capacity anyway. There are a mini and a nano variation out there. So if size is an issue you can get one of them variations. It does have a unique look. The red standard o-rings do set it off nicely. Along with the brushed steel as well. So I don't think expense was spared here at all. What about its usability? Well now the coil problem has been pretty much solved. You won't have to drain the tank every night and wrap it in a cloth when you have it in your pocket. To me it feels like most of the teething problems have been resolved and now the tank really doesn't need that much maintenance. I see this as an everyday tank so filling the juice up in this every day and changing the coil really doesn't take long at all. Now the rebuildable deck for me is a bit of a blue area. As much of a great idea it is, I personally feel that the deck itself is too small. I can build on K funds, Lemos, Tie funds and stuff like that, but for some reason I just can't get a good coil on this tank. Maybe it's just me, I don't know, maybe my hands are too big, I don't know. I have faked off my friend's rebuildable deck and it's okay. It's nothing special but the option of wanting to build your own coils is a real good benefit here, especially if you're learning to build coils as well. But I think personally it will get to the point where the airflow will just not produce enough air to go into the coil. So the possibility of having a warm vape may happen. If you like a warm vape then that's fine but personally I like a cool vape. I do like how the tank comes to pieces. You can clean literally every crevice of the tank. The vaping experience. So since you can get Canthol and Nye 200 cores for this I thought I'd do a comparison. The Canthol coil I have is the version 3 0.5 ohm coil. The manufacturer recommends a power level between 15 and 60 watts, so I'll do a few level tests for you. The Ni 200 coil is rated at 0.15 ohms, because I feel an underperforming temperature coil is pointless. So I'll fire it at 50 watts with the temperature set at 450 Fahrenheit. Canthol coil at 15 watts. Oh shit. Let's take that off a bit more. Thirty-five watts. Hi, Bruce. Hi, up. Fifty-five watts. Even higher. 65 watts. Let's 
It's getting warm. I'll go even higher though, I think. Seventy watts. Whew. That's warm. I'm gonna go to seventy-five watts. I think that'll be its limit there. Seventy-five watts. Oh yeah, it's not even burning. That's not bad. That's at 75 watts. That's 15 watts higher than what the manufacturer says. I'm not going to take it any higher because it's just getting really, really warm. Now 200 coil. Not bad. That's at 50 watts at 450 Fahrenheit. I think overall the performance with both coils are very good. With a V3 coil, you can just turn it up a little bit more and take a bigger hit without risking the dry hit. The 9200 coil is great when you find that sweet spot. With the added benefit of never getting a dry hit, you can get loads of flavour. But saying that, I do prefer the Canthol coil. With the 9200, yes, you can take a very long vape. But with the Canthol coil, you just get that sudden hit on a very short burst and it just hits that little bit harder and that's what I like. So what are the bad points about this tank? So for what I've seen and heard across the whole range be the Plus, the Nano and the Mini, these tanks still leak but it seems to be coming from the O-rings that are not creating a strong enough seal around the glass tank itself. And you can see here like the juice is sitting right on the base of the airflow the juice has gone past the seal, it's literally the gravity of the glass tank that's holding the juice in. Generally new o-rings do sort the problem out but it's a bit of a bore leg having to replace them all the time. I'm going to say the glass tube as well is very vulnerable. It's an exotic look but as the glass covers around 60% of the tank surface area it's going to be very liable to a knock. And the rebuildable deck. If your hands are bigger than a baby's hands then I think you're gonna have trouble building on this. If you want a rebuildable tank, look elsewhere. It's not a big issue for me, but it might be a negative for other people, and that's the width of the tank. It's 24 millimeters, a standard mod, well, 99% of mods are at a 22 millimeter width. So you will get an overhang with this. But with that said, you can hold copious amounts of juice in this tank. So each to their own, I suppose. So overall, the sub tank isn't perfect, but it's hardly a bag of shit either. Designers have gone for looks over ergonomics, and in areas it does show. The O-rings still present a problem. They can be replaced, but it really isn't the point. It's a low stress area, and you wouldn't expect something so simple to wear out as quickly as it does. I can live with not having to put my favorite drip tip on this, as it's not a standard 510 connection. But the fact that the tank leaks which is one of the most simple things to sort out is just an inexcusable fault. And also the size of the larger tank, why couldn't Kangatech build a bigger rebuildable deck for the Subtank Plus? If you compare it to the TFV4, their rebuildable deck is enormous. It just makes the deck for the Subtank just that bit too fiddly. On the other hand, you do get lots of spares in the box. It's redesigned Canthol and 9200 coils are great. If you are after a tank that provides great flavour, then get one of these. If you're a cloud chaser, look elsewhere. You still get a nice strong hit and for some people, that's all they want. But this tank is nearly a year old, or in fact, I think it's over a year old now. Things have improved on other tanks, but it's still a great beginner's tank. I definitely recommend this for someone who's moving up from an Ego C5 tank, or even is probably stuck on a Pro tank still. So, as usual, I hope you found this useful. Please rate, subscribe, comment in the doobly-doo, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.